And today my topic will be pandas and red pandas from the animal names in ERZ to the etymology of panda in different languages. So you may have the question, what is ERZ and what is the language speaking there? Uh, so here's the content today. And before going into our topic, I would like to show you a video about the background of ERZ because you can know uh, you can have a concept of how the Yarza people are living and how Yarza people are speaking. Uh, so now I believe all of us have known how the people in Yarza living a life with a very close relationship with like the nature, the environment, and the wild animals, including pandas. Uh, so we can have a look at the background of Yarza. Uh, so where is Yarze? Uh, here we can see a map of Sichuan. So we can see Yarze is in the middle, uh, which is in Baoxin County, Yan Prefecture. And uh, I did a field work last summer in Yarze. So here are some photos I took in the field. Uh, we can see the houses in the mountains, and we can also see the Yarze people. They are dancing and singing and with their own clothes. And I also saw some animals in the field like the cow, the yak, and here we can see a monkey in the mountain. Mm -hmm. Looks very cute. And now we know that there are many wild animals in the town. And we may also know that Sichuan is always called as the, the hometown of pandas, maybe. But maybe no one knows where was the first panda discovered. So uh, we can have a look at a story of the first discovery of pandas uh, in the 19th century. A French missionary, Armand David, he discovered panda in Dengchi Buli Baoxin County, which is right next to Yarze, which means that the people living there are also using this local language, Yarze. And it is the first time that the outside world became aware of this kind of species. And in 1869, David, he sent back a fur and skeletal specimen to France. So here we can see this specimen and also David, he had a record of panda, and we will come back to this story later, and we will have a look of this record in detail. Uh, so I will also talk about something about Yarzi language. So what is this kind of Yarzi language? Actually, it is a Situ dialect in the Gyanic branch in Sino Tibetan language family. So, if you remember Shuya's speech, you will also know something about Gyanic languages. So, I will also talk a little bit because Gyanic languages are very special for their very complex phonological and morphological systems. And here I want to show you the Yarze phonological system. Uh, so, there are like uh, 40 consonants and six vowels. And I think what is also special for YRZ is that YRZ language has many animal terms that are not found in other Gyaronic languages. For example, it has many uh, rare animals, such as the wet woodpecker, the tucking, because we know that because of YRZ's environment, it is home to many rare wild animals. And what I want to focus on today is that the Yarze language is the only one language found in Garanic language family, which has the word for panda and red panda, which they will call it as the Gongbrong and Luet. So we may have a uh, we may have the question that why only Yarze has these two animal terms? Uh, because we can have a look of these two uh distribution maps for pandas and red pandas. So we know that. Pandas and red pandas only inhabited in the right areas. So we know in Sichuan, both pandas and red pandas inhabited the transitional zone between mountains and plains. So now if we have a look of the Garonic language distribution map, we can notice that uh, Yarze is spoken in the southernmost part of the Garonic language distribution area, which is right at the transitional zone between mountains and plains. So we know that only Yarze people can have the chance to look at these two kinds of animals. And now we may have more questions. For example, why in Yarze we use two different words, the gongbrong and wet, to totally different pronunciations for panda and red panda. But why in English we use panda and red panda to similar names for these two different animals? 
and why in other languages, in other Central Tibetan languages, uh, for example, in Chinese, we use Xiongmao and Xiao Xiongmao for these two different animals. And how do people speaking different languages regard these two animals? Will people regard these as two similar animals or will people see them as two totally different animals? So firstly, I want to say something about the etymology of this, the Gongbrong in Yarzi. So now we know that uh, Yarzi people will call panda as the Gongbrong, but what does it mean? Uh, actually, the Gong means bear and Brong means wet. So this term for bear, the Gong in Yarzi is also a cognate in Central Tibetan language family. For example, in other Gyarang languages in Brokbar, it is called the Wam. In style, it is called Wa. And in Tibetan, it is called something like Dong. And in Chinese, uh, it is reconstructed as like Wam in Old Chinese by Victor and CR. And so we can know that Panda is seen as a type of bear with red color in Yarzi. But uh, what about red panda? Red panda is called red. So we know that panda and red panda are, are seen as two completely different animals because there is no connection for them for, for naming them. And I think that is very valuable for Yarzi because in most modern languages, the term for red panda has not been preserved. But Yerzi has preserved it. For example, in Red and Tibetan, it is now called as Biladum uh, Chun, something like that, which means a small cat bear. And in Mandarin, it is called Xiao Xiong Mao. We know it is also a compound. And in modern Nepali, it is called Rato Panda. So uh, I think only Yerzi has preserved this kind of uh, animal name. And uh, here I want to say something about the etymology of panda in other tibeto burman languages for more resources. Uh, so we know apart from Yarzi, the term for panda is only found in a few Chionic and Loloish languages. For example, in Mianchi Chionic, it is called uh, Dipshi, and which means bear and wet, and in Liangshan Loloish, it, it is called or Chu, something also like wet bear. And we know that we have a master here who is specializing in Chinese, uh, in Loloish language. <laughs> really? So, okay, okay. Uh, so if you have more information about how the Loloish people are calling this. Okay, thanks. And so we know in these languages, in tibeto burman languages, pandas are always regarded as a type of bear, just like uh, Yarize. But we may think that why don't English just use a compound like a uh, black and white bear to, to describe this kind of animal? So we can have a look of the etymology of panda in English. <clears throat> so actually, the English term panda is borrowed from French. So in, 18... <laughs> in French, in 1848, it appeared when an ethnologist, he documented his disco discovery of red panda in Nepal. And he also recorded the local name for the red panda as this Nigoya uh, Ponya, something like this. And the English term panda originates from the later part of the local name Nigoya Ponya. And this word refers to the red panda at first, but now the giant panda we know now. But we may, we may think that what does this word, this Nigoya Ponya mean in the local language? And what is this local language? Is it a kind of Nepali language or is it another language? So if we search this question in Google, we may, we may get an explanation, which is that the term Nigoya Ponya comes from Nepali, where the first part means bamboo and the later part means cloud. Uh, for example, we can see the word for bamboo in Nepali is bomsa and uh, the word for cloud is ponya. So we can notice that uh, this word for cloud ponya looks very like this ponya. But we can also see a very significant difference in pronunciation between the Nepali words for bamboo, this bongsa, and this nigoya. So I think it cannot explain the origin of the term nigoya ponya. And uh, I also want to mention here is that uh, Nepali is an Indo-European language, so that is why bomsa looks very like this bamboo. And now if we have a look in Tibetic languages, we can see 
there are the term smugma for bamboo and punya for messenger. So this term for the red panda and Goya punya looks more like Tibetic instead of Nepali. So I think this term seems to be derived from a Tibetic language spoken in Nepal. For example, we can know that Sherpa, a kind of Tibetic language spoken in Nepal, the term for bamboo is Yuma, which I think it sounds more like this uh, Nigoya. And because of this question, I also asked uh, Dr. Tim, who is very specializing in Himalayan languages, and he said that there is no Nigoya Ponya using nowadays in Nepal, and it cannot be derived from Nepali. It might come from Tamangic or other Tibetic languages. Uh, because he is very good at Tamangic. He said that the word structure looks very like a Tamangic language. And so I think this term Goya Ponya is not derived from Nepali, where it would be bamboo claw, but rather from a Sino-Tibetan language, especially a Tibetic language spoken in Nepal, where it would mean like bamboo message or something like that. So now we know instead of panda, the red panda was discovered earlier by the Western world, and in uh, panda in English is from the local term this uh, Nigoya Ponya. And I also want to mention something about the scientific name here because we will use it very soon. And the scientific name for the red for the red panda is named as uh, Aluros fulgens, and Aluros means cat, and fulgens means shining. Uh, I'm not very good at biology, but uh, I can say something about the, the scientific name. Uh, we know that every recognized animal is given a two-part scientific name, made up of a generic name and a specific name, and they are often descriptive, and they have traditionally been based on Latin or Greek roots. So I know nothing about Latin or Greek, so if you know how to pronounce these uh, animal terms, these scientific names, please correct me. And now we may think, how is the naming of the red panda connected to the naming of panda in English? Uh, we come back to the story at first. So uh, in 1869, the French missionary, he discovered panda in Sichuan. And at that time, he gave panda a scientific name, uh, which means white and black bear. So we can know that panda was first seen as black and white bear by him and also just like in Yerze or in other Tibeto-Burman languages, all the people at that time were thinking that panda is a kind of bear. But what happened next? Uh, in 1870, after the skeletal specimen of the panda was sent back to France, a French zoologist, he, he saw that the features of the panda were very similar to those of the red panda. For example, both of them have a kind of, we call it as false thumb. So he changed the scientific name of panda to another one, which, uh, which is something like white and black footed cat. So from then on, panda and red panda were considered as two similar animals. And in English, the term panda could refer to both the giant panda and the red panda. And also because of the increasing fame of the giant panda, the English term panda is more commonly used to refer to the giant panda rather than the red panda. And this understanding in English has also been transmitted in many other uh, languages, especially some uh, modern languages, such as we can see Chinese, we use Xiongmao and Xiao Xiongmao. And in modern Nepali, we also use panda and Tuato panda. So that is why in many other languages, panda and red panda are regarded as similar animals because of the English influence. And we may also have a look of the etymology of Xiumao in Chinese. Uh, now we know that in modern Chinese, we use Xiumao and Xiao Xiumao, but in old Chinese, the term for panda was Mo, uh, which can be reconstructed as Murak by Yun Jinxi. And uh, so in uh, Shu Wen Jiezi, which is a traditional like dictionary, so Xu Shen said that uh, Mo looks very like bear, uh, yellow and black in color comes from Shu, which is the region of the present Sichuan. And in commentary on Shanghai Jing, Guo Pu said that it looks like bear with black and white color and it eats, eats copper and uh, iron. 
So we can see panda was seen as a very different species from bear. But in addition to mo, panda was also referred to as bai bao, which means white lepers in old Chinese. Because uh, like in preaching in Arya, we can also see something like more uh, bai bao, more white lepers. So I think this is very interesting for us to know because panda was called white lepers but, and was considered a type of leopard that looks like bear, but not uh, a kind of bear. And in modern Chinese, we know that the term used for, for panda is xiong mao, which means bear cat, and it borrowed the scientific name of panda. And how about uh, the red panda in old Chinese? In old Chinese, the term for red panda might be this tui, uh, but I'm not very sure because there is not enough resources. And uh, we can see in Arya, it is said that tui, it looks like small bear and its fur is yellow. So we can see red panda is considered a different species, but looks like small bear. So now we know that in modern Chinese, the term used for red panda is xiaoxiong mao, small bear cat. And modern Chinese also borrowed the English term panda for the red panda. And uh, we have known that because of the interchangeability of terms for panda and red panda in English, a similar situation has also occurred in modern Chinese and also in uh, many modern languages. Uh, so finally is a conclusion uh, so now we know that panda and red panda, these two terms in English are from a Tibetic language where they would call it as Ngoya Ponya, uh, which means bamboo messenger. And uh, in Chinese, we will use Xiongma and Xiaoxiongma also two similar terms for these two animals. And uh, so in Yarzi, we will use the Gongbrong and Red two very different terms for these two different animals. So uh, similar to other tibeto burman languages, in Yarze, panda is seen as a type of bear. And in Yarze, red panda is seen as a separated animal. And in English, panda and red panda are seen as two similar animals. And in Old Chinese, panda and red panda were seen as two unrelated animals. And in modern Chinese, they are seen as two similar animals because of the English. So. Uh, we now know that Yarzi language has preserved many animal terms that are either absent or lost in modern languages because Yarzi is the home to many rare wild animals because it's unique location and, and environment. So that is all for my presentation today and I would like to thank to Irish, Irish Research Council for supporting. Uh, thanks. <laughs>